Hello, Brett Etheridge here, founder of Dominate Test Prep and the industry's leading executive assessment prep course. I'm glad you're here where we are going to be talking about algebra as it may appear on the executive assessment. And in fact, really, I have two purposes for this video. The first purpose is to document once and for all, for posterity's sake, me with a beard. <laughs> and I say it sort of jokingly, but sort of not. Like if you've ever seen any of my other videos here on YouTube, or maybe you're one of my students going through my course, and you've seen all of the course videos, I don't have a beard. I've never had a beard, but now I do. So I don't know. Do you like it? Don't like it? Thumbs up or thumbs down in the chat area? I'm probably going to be shaving it off here soon as we move towards summer because it's just hot. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, here we are on video with a beard, but really the second purpose and the main purpose of this video is to expose you to some of the algebra concepts you could see on test day, to walk through a harder problem and show you how to do it, and to teach you a faster and easier way of solving some hard algebra questions. So it will equip you with some really good strategies and ways of answering these types of questions. I would just caution you though, like you're maybe here for the right reasons or maybe you're here because I know a lot of times we feel like we want to do the hard stuff. If I can answer hard questions, then certainly I could answer easier questions. It may be, but really we need to learn to walk before we can run, right? And so I would just encourage you to ask yourself and not even ask yourself, like do the research. What is your target score? Do you need a 150? Most students uh, you know, preparing for the executive assessment really only need that sort of middle range score, somewhere in the 150, 155 neighborhood, which you have to work for. It's not easy to get a 150 or 155, and yet that's not really the highest possible scores. And so if you only need those moderate scores, you should be playing potentially in a different sandbox, right? Just be working some of the easier and medium difficulty questions before you jump into sort of the deep end and do some of the harder type of stuff. Now, if you have already been preparing for a while, maybe you've taken a practice assessment and you've already scored a 155, for example, and now you're shooting for the 160, great, you're definitely in the right place. And even if you're not shooting for a 160, you're still gonna learn a lot from this. So without further ado, actually, with one further ado. I don't know if you can say it that way. We're gonna go through an example here, but I have a host of other practice questions that you can do for free on our website. Head over to dominatetestprep.com forward slash what's on the EA, where I have a free quiz with six additional practice questions that you can do just to familiarize yourself with the executive assessment, watch some of my video solutions there. It's good additional practice. But in this video, let's tackle this question. So here's the sample algebra question, similar to what you could see on the executive assessment. And it says that three musical notes have frequencies X, Y, and Z, respectively. If X, Y, and Z are positive, X over Y equals Y over Z, and two X equals Z, what is Y in terms of X? And then you have your answer choices with X's in those answer choices. Go ahead and press pause, give this a try on your own, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it together. Okay, so how did you do? It's a lot of variables, right? And a lot of times a question like this pops up on the screen, and especially if it's been a long time since you have seen this type of stuff, you can have a tendency to panic, to freak out. Oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? I don't know how to deal with all this stuff. And like, you just, you freeze up and you maybe guess and you move on or you just mark it and you skip it and come back to it. And those are all fine from a test taking strategy standpoint but I want you to be able to systematically answer a question like this. And let me walk you through the algebraic solution, sort of the traditional solution, and then I'm gonna give you a non-standard way of getting this right as well. When it comes to algebra, right, a lot of times we think about basic algebra, and a simple algebra question would be something like, you know, 2x equals 16. Okay, well, what do we do with that? Solving for a single variable. And that's algebra, and that's stuff you probably haven't done since high school, but you probably still remember how to do it a little bit. We'll divide both sides by 2, and so x equals 8. 16 divided by 2 is 8. And that would be a super easy question, well below even the, the expected competency that you would have for the executive assessment. The only reason I say that is just to say that's basic, but it builds from there. How do we make an algebra question harder? We add additional variables. Oh, you can solve for x. Well, what if you have an x and a y? 
Okay, so you can solve for an X and Y, that's called simultaneous equations, which is a skill you would need to know for the executive assessment. You know, an equation with two variables, maybe you have two equations and two variables, so that's harder. Well, now what if we have three variables? Now all of a sudden the question becomes even harder. And what if we have exponents, which we're gonna to get to here in a moment, right? So there are some different layers that get added on that take a question from being super easy to more difficult. And so when we look at this question, maybe it doesn't seem that hard to you, but if it does seem hard to you, that's why. That's what makes it harder. But we wanna bring it back down. And the way we wanna bring it back down is, when you have all sorts of variables, let's reduce the number of variables we have. And we wanna look for ways to substitute. We've been given two relationships, right? We've been given this relationship and this relationship, and we can use these two relationships to sort of combine, to substitute, to eliminate at least one of the variables, right? So that's what we wanna do, and that's the type of thing you wanna look for. How would you know to do that? Well, I just taught you, right? So now you'll know to be on the lookout for you. Real quick, by the way, back to the wording in the question. Notice the question says, what is Y in terms of X? You know, that's some wording that sometimes my students stumble on. Don't worry about the in terms of X part. The question is literally, what is Y? That's what you're solving for. It is asking, what is Y? Period, just focus on that. In terms of X? Well, of course it's in terms of X. There are X's in the answer choices. That's how you know it's in terms of X. But don't worry about that part. Just solve for Y. The question is, what is Y? I think just, just taking that approach will help you on these types of questions. So what is why? We're trying to find why. Well, but I have a Y here and a Y there, okay, but I also have this X's and this Z, and so what we're gonna wanna do is substitute, right? And so it literally tells us that Z equals two X. So what if we just kinda get rid of the Z by substituting like the two X in for the Z, because Z equals two X. Now we can rewrite our equation that they've given us, x over y equals y over, now we're not gonna deal with the z, we're gonna have a two x. And now we've improved our ability to answer this question. We still have two variables, we can't definitively solve for y, and we can't definitively solve for x because we only have one equation with two variables, but we can still solve for y in terms of X. And what that means is we just need to isolate Y. We just need to like get Y on one side of the equation. Remember when I gave you two X equals 16? Solving for X, that means let's isolate X on one side of the equation. We do that by you know, dividing out the two and we have X on one side of the equation. 16 over two equals eight. We wanna essentially do the same thing here. We wanna solve for Y, let's isolate Y and whatever that ends up being, that's what it is, right? So the way we're gonna do that is by cross multiplying. Remember that from high school math. Y times Y is Y squared. Uh, like I said, it's a hard question, right? Now we're dealing with quadratics, square terms, right? So Y squared, it is what it is, and that's going to equal, cross multiply, X times two X is two X squared, okay? But now we've made some progress, right? We're just sort of moving the ball down the field. Y squared does equal 2X squared, but I don't want Y squared, I want Y, just Y. I need to solve for Y. The way we do that is we'll take the square root of both sides. So that does now isolate Y because the square root of Y squared, the square root kind of just cancels out the square. So Y now equals something. It equals the square root of 2X squared. Exponent rules, which you'll also have to learn, right? There's a lot going on in this question. You'll have to study exponent rules separately, perhaps if you don't remember this, but we can sort of separate out the component parts underneath the radical and say that that's the same thing as the square root of two times the square root of x squared. Okay, so then that means y equals, well the square root of two is just, we'll leave that as the square root of two. I mean, you can approximate it as a number, but we'll just call it the square root of two. Uh, not call it, that's what it is. Um, the square root of two, and then the square root of x squared, you know, the, the square root cancels out the, the square, and so that's just x. So square root of two x, which is exactly answer choice B. So a long process, perhaps, not all that long, if you kind of knew what to do, and now you see what to do, 
And again, that's the algebraic solution. So a fairly challenging algebra question that you now know how, now know how to do. Hopefully I dusted off a few of those cobwebs. I promise though to show you an easier way or at least an alternative way of doing that. And that is to use a non-standard approach that I like to teach. I teach it in my course. My students love this approach. And it's basically to take algebra out of the realm of the esoteric and make it more concrete by working with real numbers. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean by that. And I always say, if you immediately see how to do the algebra and you feel comfortable doing the algebra, do the algebra. Do it the traditional way, right? Just make sure you're not making careless errors. But if you get stuck, here's an alternative approach, and that is to work with real numbers for some of the variables, right? It literally tells us that 2x equals z. So what if x equals 2? I just made that up. Like literally just, what if x is 2? Okay, well then 2 times 2 is 4. That would mean z would equal 4. Okay, now let's plug those in to our original equation. So x is no longer x. I'm not dealing with exponents. I'm sorry, with variables, right? What makes algebra hard? All of those variables. Like when we look at that original question, lots of variables and our mind goes crazy and we're like, what's going on here? Yeah, but if the question were a lot simpler with real numbers, like 2 over y, a real number instead of x, equals y over z is 4, now doesn't that look like a lot more accessible? It does to me, because I've got, I still have, I still have a y, but now I can solve for y. That's what the question's asking us to do. What is y? Well, y squared equals eight. So y equals the square root of eight. That's it, right? That's the answer. I have solved for y. Y is the square root of eight. Now, which answer choice is that? Well, that's the next step. We now take our x equals two and just sort of plug it into the answer choices and see which one also equals the square root of eight. Well, does two times two equal the square root of eight? No, right? And the square root of eight, by the way, what does that approximate to? Well, you know what the square root of nine is, right? The square root of nine is a perfect square. Nine is a perfect square, so the square root of nine is just three. So it's something a little less than three. So if I were going to approximate that, I don't know, like 2.8 or something like that, so but that's kind of the, the reasoning you want to do. You don't have a calculator on the quantitative section. But so we're trying to find something that's close to three, a little less than three. Definitely not four. Two times two is four. B would be close, right? Because the square root of two, the square root of two is about 1.4. We like to think of it as about 1.4, so a little less than one half. So that's sort of in the running, right? This is going to be something to less than two, right? Because two times one over something bigger than one, it's going to be a fraction, you know, less than one. So it's going to be, you know, something smaller than two, not close to 2.8. One half of x, one half of two is just one, so definitely not d. And then that gets even smaller. So yeah, at that point, without even having to do the math, we know the answer is going to be b by working with real numbers. What do you think of that? Right? So, ah, now some light bulbs are coming on. You're liking that, right? So that's an alternative approach, a way of taking an otherwise fairly challenging algebra problem and making it more concrete by working with real numbers. And that's actually a strategy I teach in my course in more detail with sort of a systematic step-by-step, -step, here's how to apply the strategy. You got the basic idea though and understanding right here, make up some numbers for the variables and work the problem with real numbers. And I think you're gonna see that it just makes a question like this a lot easier. So whichever approach you take, you learned some algebra today, you learned a non-standard approach today, you got some practice with a hard algebra question, hopefully you're feeling better about your chances on the executive assessment, and that's really what I would just encourage you. This stuff is learnable, right? The executive assessment is a beatable test, provided you learn the right things, study the right things, come at it the right way with the right strategy, and that's what hopefully this video empowered you to do. Certainly our course 
empowers you to do. And again, head over to executive uh, dominatetestprep.com forward slash what's on the EA for our free quiz, some additional practice where we will work with you and empower you to dominate the executive assessment. For now, I'm signing off. To get updates on future videos, be sure to click that subscribe button. I may or may not have a beard in the next video, but I will see you soon as we continue to work together to dominate the executive assessment. Take care, everyone.